everyone, my name is Irene and welcome to my channel Living Around where we talk all about tropical plants and gardens. In this episode, I'm really excited because um, I finally got out of my own home. Uh, so far, the episodes I've shared lately are mostly just in my own garden, but today we're going to visit a tropical garden that is really beautiful. I've only admired it so far on Instagram and today we're going to be in the garden of Lone. So welcome here and the exciting thing about here is that all his plants are super sized. So I'm going to learn about all his secret tricks. Hi Lone! Hi. Hi. I'm so excited to see your garden. Yeah. I've only admired it so far from Instagram. So yes, can you talk me through how this all started? Uh, I actually started like two years ago. So I bring my daughter to Cameron Creek. Uh -huh. So we started to collect a few plants because of the level of the plants, you know, the colors. Especially the Calathea. Calathea? Yes, the first plant I collected is Calathea. Okay. So I bought a few back home and then after a year, this is what you see. Wow, okay, there is so much, so much to see guys. Uh, and a lot of it is at the back. But let's start with the front since we're already here. Yeah. I see that you have something that looks like it's variegated. This yeah, is... This, uh, I actually got this from a friend, Chris. Mm. Ah. He, he actually says his uh, place is not bright enough mm -hmm. and he lost uh, the plant lost the variegation of pink. Ah. He calls pink dragon and pink, pink dragon. So wow. he asked me to you know nurture the plant back to the variegation. So it started out growing pink. Oh. This here would be really bright, so I believe the plant would grow well here. Does he expect yes. you to give back after? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. so you're like some, just some nurturing. Friend, yeah, yeah. Some of my friends put oh. their plants here, so what? I just have them to nurture <laughs> and then pass it back to them. <laughs> especially alocasia, <laughs> especially alocasia. So this is what I have here. I think it's like a, a plant um, health and wellness <laughs> center here. Yeah. Oh my God! Look at this. This is huge. Yeah. I can't pronounce this. Although I think it's uh, macrorhiza variegata. Yes, macrorhiza uh, variegata. This one used to be really small mm -hmm. in a pot and it's struggling to grow. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I just plant them on the ground and mm -hmm. let it be. Wow. And and so how how long did it take I to get this it, big? It takes from uh, this size. This yeah. is black stem variegated. Okay. You grow to this size about six months. Six months? Yeah, six I had months. mine in this pot like for two years and it never went beyond yes, this yes, height. Yes. I believe because of the white variegations, okay. it's, too, it's too white and the plant eventually is gone. Oh, if because, it's too much white, yes, it won't yes. be so robust. I mean, from, from my experience, you know. Okay. Because this one, this one has more green variegation, uh, green colors here. So I think because it's strong, oh. that's why it can stand for so long. Oh, this is so beautiful. Did you get this leaf? <laughs> it's so nice. Look at that. It's just so perfect. <laughs> Cut over to my own alocasia macariza variegata. So small here, even after two years, because I have it in a pot. So a tip here is to put it on the ground to get it bigger. Yeah, you can have a look at this. Is that different? You say this it's black is, stem. This uh, black stem variegation. This wow. one I got, oh it my from, God. I got it from Jane. Jane, you know Jane? Uh, I Jane, don't know. crazy plant. Oh, yeah, she, okay. Yeah, she can't grow alocasia indoor. So she passed it to me, I think look about uh, eight months ago. Wow. So it's struggling to grow well in a pot. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I just plant them on ground, it grows. Yeah. This is... Um, Platyserum, Wellingia, Cultivar, Mountain Lewis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long you name. You could say anything and I will just go, hmm, yes, that's right. <laughs> and this is the Paul Vespa. It's a hybrid of Diversifolium with Wellingia. Uh -huh. It's one of the DW series. And this is the my, one of my favorite. What is uh, it? Platyserum Antis, and in them cross with uh, Elephant Tortoise. You can see the white fuzzy fur here. And this is uh, Platyserum tarnage, one of the cultivars from Hilii. Mm. Is this entirely sphagnum moss? Yes, sphagnum moss and that's all. But inside the core will be yeah. cocoa husk and pine bark. Oh, yeah. wow. It's, it's like a work of art on its own. And then what's this one? It's uh, Colocasia black marble. Oh. I got it as a free plant uh, from Farron. Wow. Yeah, so farm parts to me as a black marble, but it struggled to grow here, I believe, because it's too shaded. Okay. It's under the Buchida tree and it's not much of sunlight. Mm -hmm. That's why it can't really grow well. This one also black marble, black marble here, 
So it's struggling to grow. So I believe I will ship it to another place that is back there. You know, I can't tell the difference between Colocasia and Alocasia and Alocasia. or Caladium. They, they look so similar. Yeah, because to, 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 to actually classify them in general, mm -hmm. they actually have a plant, which they have a bulb oh. on the ground. The things to differentiate uh, Colocasia is actually from the plateau insertions. Most of the Colocasia will but the potential, uh, potential insertions will come to the middle there. Okay. And that's the pattern the of yes, yes, that's the colocasia. Mm -hmm. But some of the some of the alocasias will have a middle uh, middle insertions on the leaf blade also, mm -hmm. like clapilata, cuprea. Okay. So the things to differentiate is from the leaf. Sometimes the growing pattern. Sometimes the rhizome. Oh. Because usually alocasia have longer rhizome, mm -hmm. and uh, colocasia will grow in bobs like a ball shapes kind of rhizome. And this is illustrious ah. over there. So what is this? I have, it. Oh, I have no this, idea what it is. It's an uh, it's, uh, Indonesian hybrid. Oh. And we call it uh, Alocasia Lucky One. Mm, okay. So uh, I believe it's a hybrid between cross of uh, Sinuata and uh, Elba. Okay. Alocasia Elba. Wow. I have seen one grow to like about like two feet tall. Wow. Yeah. So what I did is uh, I got them from a pot mm -hmm. and it's not doing well. So I planted on ground with a really a lot of humus, chunky compost. Oh yes, let's check yeah, it out. Yeah, akadama. Akadama, pumis. Yeah, pine bugs. Pine bugs. And some dead leaf, you know, you can see. So we slowly decompose. Oh, the and dead leaves, okay, that's yep, good. Yep, yep, yep. How about cocoa chip? Some of them have uh, cocoa chip, okay. so I would just let it be. Yes. Because I, cocoa chip is good to fill up the space, but mm. if it slowly decompose, you will see some mushroom grow up from it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. And then they are kind of, uh, okay, under direct exposure, but, but you don't get a lot of direct sun. Yeah, because you can see the buchuda here. Yeah. Now it's about uh, 9, 9, 9.45 a.m. Yeah. So the sun has come from there. So when it sits the middle, uh, middle afternoon, the sunlight mm -hmm. will filter by the buchuda. Mm -hmm. So they are doing well here. Is this like the... Box it's a, it's a, no, it's actually a fern. Okay. It's a fern. I have no idea what fern is it. Wow. And this one is planted by my mom. Okay. So uh, I just, this this what stays it. I didn't remove this. I didn't touch anything. I just put it here because I like how, how fluffy it looks. Yeah, it's like a bottle brush. <laughs> you know. it's well, I believe it's a fern. I, it's a fern. I just forgot the genus name. Okay, I'm starting to recognize what I see from your Instagram. Oh my god, that is huge! Yeah. It's bigger than my face. It used to be bigger, and I think it's shrink because I gave a lot of pops. You can see, I think it's more than three to four pops. There's is a lot of pops. Is it still in a pot or it's on the no, ground? No, it's on ground. I can show mm -hmm. you. It's grown on the ground, so you can see here. Wow. So. Yeah, it, it's quite in a chunky media. You can see it's pine bark okay. and a few mice, some charcoal, some compost. And I like it how your stem is it's really big yeah. also because I think I tried fertilizing mine. The leaves did grow uh -huh. big. Uh -huh. However, it felt that the stem couldn't support it. Yeah, yes. It went it, it, yes, it's some of the plants will, because some of the colocasia when it encounters strong wind. Okay. Yeah, it's that. I will just cut it away and let them grow back. No worries, I think Colocasia is a fast grower, so it should be fine. Okay. I think about three to four days, you will see new leaf come up from the, the, the petal. Three to four days, you will see new growth. Well, this so is new I, growth. I've learned something. I'm going to put mine on the ground. And yes, yes. The they prefer on the ground more than pots, Colocasia. So, okay, what's the secret to this big leaf? <laughs> Sunlight, really. Sunlight? Colocasia really loves sun and water. Okay. So what I did is I watered them almost every day. Okay. Almost every day. And uh, this area, it receives bright direct sun. Oh. For about like two to three hours. But too much, it will burn the edge of a leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But so it needs enough, but not too much. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So bright light will be good. Okay. Oh, wow. This Fern tree. I love fern trees, and yours is in perfect condition. Yes, yes. I love fern tree too, despite the, the, the give the jungle wipes, and it really spice up the overall compositions. Yeah, mine sometimes they tend to, to brown. Um, yes, yes. It's mine, so hot now. Yeah, mine, mine, mine did. And I would, what I did, I would just cut it away, 
Because when the new growth come out, mm -hmm. the old fronts will actually die off, mm -hmm. so we can see the brown edges and stuff. But I believe that uh, when it mature, it stabilized, it can hold more than five leaves, uh, five fronts. Yeah. It started to hold, uh, I think, about one, two, three, four fronts right now. Yes. Previously, when I started plant on ground, mm -hmm. it grows not more than two to three fronts. Oh, okay. So this is. This is I forgot the species, yeah. but I believe it's uh, Cyatia, C Y A T H E A. Okay. But I forgot the species. But it's a lowland fern, so it can oh. take up heat and direct full sun. Oh yeah, because they are lowland and highland. Yes, the yes, yes. This is lowland one would be better. It's suitable here. Yeah. It can it can take the hot climate. I spot this <laughs> Yeah, Malomila. Uh, I think it's a pink variegation, Malomila. You can see the pink behind. Pink. What? How do you, oh. Yeah, over there the new leaf. Oh. You can see. <laughs> yeah, this is a pink variegation. You can see. Oh. Yep. Uh, yeah. So. I had two before and then they reverted and I don't know where they Yeah, my reverted tools. What I did is I would just give them plenty of light. I, I just let it be. Okay. It grows back. <laughs> uh, what do you call this? Uh, Tomatophyllum sanadu. It's amazing how you know. <laughs> it used to be philodendron sanadu, so uh, sanadu, uh, yeah, yeah, sanadu. Okay. So uh, it reclassified as uh, tomatophyllum. Ah. So I love tomatophyllum sanadu because it's really bring up the jungle vibes too. Yeah. Yeah, you can overall complete the whole uh, landscape compositions yeah. too. And this one also tree ferns, but we call that uh, dwarf tree ferns. Oh yeah. But the thing is that I need to use something to support its uh, weight because the tree leaves it grow too fast. Mm. I believe it's called Blachnum, Blachnum Gibbon. Oh. In uh, Silver Fern Lady. I have to consult you how to spell all of these things <laughs> you just told me. Yeah, maybe I'm too free to look up on Google. Okay, I spy with my little eye and I'm looking which I thought is called Cleopatra, but it's not. What is it called, uh, It's called Clypeolata. It's endemic in the Philippines. Um, and I got it from one of my Philippine friends. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yep. You can start a new leaf right now. So, so yeah. This is like kind of filtered. Yep, you feel the sunlight, it's shady. It grows under the tree ferns. Yeah. You're really happy here, so I'll just let it be here. Fern, yes, happy. and another. Other than that, you can see the sandirana over there. There's uh, one sandirana nobilis. Is that that one? Yeah, yeah, you can see. Okay, there's quite a few that look very similar. Yeah. This is not the African mask. No, it's not. It's, it's sandirana nobilis, okay. and they call it crisp plant oh, because wow. of the shapes of the plant. Wow, I think. Foliage. Hey, I remember a few months ago uh. you said. You're done with alocasia because you're so diva. Yeah, they are really diva. There's a lot of them is gone, yeah. but most of them stays. Mm -hmm. Most of them stays, and uh, the the one key to grow uh, alocasia is actually be patient, okay. and you have to expect they will actually gone eventually, because you have no idea when will it be gone, and you have no idea whether they will, they will thrive under your care or not. Okay. That's the thing of growing alocasia. You have a lot of pots here. Yeah. Leave. What are these? Let me take it out. Uh, here you go. This is uh, heterophylla. So I grow this from a bulb. And you can see there's a lot of bulbs coming up. This one. This one, rock bulbs. Oh, wow. There's one here. There's a few more. I think really underneath the, the plant, you can see it's happy. It's really chunky, medium. They, they like it. This. This one is, is the is the one that we call Coneolensis. Coneolensis. <laughs> I will never remember it. But yeah, I, I quite struggle to grow this one. I I have no idea what it needs, but it is growing. So I, I I'm not complaining, but it's growing. Oh, okay. So it called Coneolensis. Wow. So there's a few more. Scalprum. This is the tissue culture scalp room. Okay. Okay, so there's two different types. Yep. I believe this is another form of scalp room. Yeah. So you can have a look. And then let's see, let's place what the difference. This is the tissue culture one that we find in the nursery. Ah, uh, okay. 
Okay, but even then you can't find them so easily in the nursery. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. I mean right now, it's not easy to find anymore. Oh, uh, more plants hidden underneath. So, uh, these are uh, alocasia. I got it as uh, alocasia simple. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's, what's the name of the plant. But the salatome is alocasia simple. And it's widely available in Malaysia nursery. It's like hybrid, you think? Yes, I think it's a hybrid came from the same uh, cultivar okay. from Indonesia. The one who cultivate uh, uh, El Batu one and the one who cultivate Lucky one that I showed you just now. And wow. a few of my friends suspect it has the genes of Sinuata. That's why you can see the, the Sinuata uh, leaf blades. You can yeah. see it has the textures of Sinuata. Okay, okay. And then the ever classic Glorious. Um, yeah. Your leaf is coming out, so... Hey, I noticed your leaves are all in perfect condition. Really? Let me you show you. Do use a lot of pesticide <laughs> or something? No, I, I don't. I don't use pesticide at all. No. But so, sometimes I use a bit of neem oil. Oh. But what I believe is when the plant is strong and healthy, mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's actually not much of maintenance that you have to do. This is what we have here. This is a very unusual looking monster. Yeah, I uh, I got this I got it as a monster, nothing much, uh -huh. and I tried to search online, yeah. and uh, some of my friends told me it's a really Brazil common farm monster. It's really common in Brazil, okay. and it's not really common here. <laughs> yeah, yes, for a plant that has its name as a yes, common yes. Brazil. I used to thought this is the monster Sierra. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, it's not because of the deep fenestration. Sierra has even deep fenestration. But this one is uh, slightly different than the usual Deliciosa. You can see the fenestration gap is bigger. Okay, now I know your treasures are inside. So let's <laughs> have go a look. Inside. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wait, let me take everything in. Yep. So Just a moment. Let's start with this yeah. corner. This is the philodendron. Plamonia. Oh, Plamonia. Yes, yes, Plamonia. I saw in your Instagram that mm -hmm. this really grew a lot for you in the past six months. Uh, yes, it grows uh, tremendously. And uh, I have no idea why they grow full sparse. You, can see, you can see it's blooming right now. It's blooming. There's another inflorescence coming up. So you could potentially make plant babies. I have no idea how to cross pollinate. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> so here. And okay, we what is his secret mix? Right. I have a Palmania and it has never grown so much. Uh, let me tell you something about uh, pine bugs. Okay. Uh, usually pine bugs will slowly decompose if you mix too much in the soil medium. Okay. So my advice is don't mix too much of organic medium in alocasia. Mm -hmm. Because alocasia rhizome is really sensitive to root rots and uh, the rhizome will eventually infect it by bacteria okay. or fungus and then you will got nothing else left. Oh. So, uh, but for philodendron, they like, they like uh, organic matter. So I mix a lot of pine box into them. And you can see a really chunky uh, Pima is a big size one and a small size. And I mix quite a lot of uh, compost. So you can see their roots, there's many will everywhere in the pot. So fibrous and a thick one, you can see here. So in here, there's like pumice bark. Pumice bark, also my cot, a smaller size pumice. Okay. And no both. soil? Yes, compost. Compost? Okay. All right. Yep. And so the philodendron? Yep. I use a little pine box. Yes, they like to compost in the pine box. Yeah. But for alocasia, mm -hmm. I don't really uh, advise to put a lot of uh, organic matter unless yeah. you're confident. Yeah. <laughs> so if you grow alocasia in pots, I would just advise to put more pum pumice. Okay. And less organic matter such as pine bark or other stuff like rice husk because eventually they will decompose mm -hmm. and it will attract a lot of uh, micro bacteria, uh, microorganisms and it will encourage fungus and then eventually will rot the rhizome. But of it's funny how in nature they are in these things, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But the thing <laughs> is, in nature, uh -huh. uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of space for them to maneuver. Mm -hmm. But in the pot, yeah. there's really limited space. So what they have is only in the pot. Mm -hmm. so 
uh, and in nature it takes uh, it takes place for them to grow and in pots it's not they will just have no more space for them to go and uh, eventually it will just suffocate inside the pot uh, that's my experience i remember a few months ago uh -huh. you told me about your alocasia mix so uh -huh. i pulled them out of my potting soil i put them in really chunky stuff like barks pumice even lacquer uh -huh. and then they are flourishing yeah, yeah, yeah. and because then i have no fear when i leave them outside in the rain every day and it's okay I don't no. have to worry about yes. overwatering. Yes, they yeah. prefer to be that way. You can actually have a look. I will just show you what kind of mix that I gave my alocasia. Oh, yes. So, this is uh, alocasia tigrina superba. Okay. It's just a narrow form of a tigrina. So what I did is, I don't mix a lot of the box inside the medium. Mm -hmm. Because the box will slowly decompose and it attracts a lot of fungus and stuff. It will affect Isn't the rising. that a, a worry if it starts to attract fungus? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Some, sometimes you'll see some mycelium in the pine bark, which it's slowly decomposing. Okay. So, but for pumice, pumice is inorganic matter, but it's really good in moisture retentive. Okay. So, it likes to stay moist every time. So you can see my, so you can see there's a lot of root here. Mm. Yep. There's a lot of roots and uh, the pumice is there. And, okay. yeah. So we were talking a lot about the potting media, but look at this plumani eye. It's huge, bigger than two palms. Yeah, ah. and it's really doing well here. And it's chasing the sunlight, you can see. This is the latest leaf. Okay. And yeah, it's chasing the sunlight and it's happy. It starts to bloom. So hey, we'll just there's like speckles of silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is because normal for it's plumani? normal for plumani eye. Okay. Because people thought that uh, speckles of the silver is only available in 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 mummy. Yeah. When I got this plumani eye, there's a lot of speckles around the foliage. Mm. But when it mature, yeah, it's gone. The silver patch is gone. Oh. This leave behind. Uh, I got it as uh, nanga returns, yeah. but I believe it's not. It's not nanga returns because a lot of Malaysian thought. They bought it as a nanga. Yeah. It's actually not. Uh, what do you think? Uh, some people saw it as a fuzzy petal. A fuzzy petal. Yeah, F U Z Z Y P E L. I don't know what's because, that called. Okay. Because but if you if you search my Instagram hashtag, yeah. I hashtag it as a Thai nanga returns. Then you will see what I'm trying to talk about there. Actually, I read it last night. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then you say, <laughs> yeah. It, it has a name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Kastu whiskey eye. Wow. It, it, it found because nang, nanga yeah. nanga is supposed to be a crawler. Okay. This one is a climber. You see, it start to climb. Ah. You can see the rhizome is growing upward instead of uh, like the plumania is growing, crawling. Yes. So, so what nanga is supposed to crawl? Yes, nanga is supposed to be crawl. Oh, then the one I thought I have is a nanga. Is not yeah, nanga is a pterosaur like Glowism, McDowell or pasta but oh. this is not oh well let me have a see <laughs> this oh is that a uh, splendid splendid yep. yes so this is the cross between the uh, malala chrysum and verocosum yes yes, yes. Okay. it's doing well here it receives direct sunlight yeah. for just a couple of hours and it's doing fine okay, more leaves. yeah yeah oh. i can have a look here Perfect. <laughs> oh, and this is your melana crossroad. Yes, I grow it from a really small cutting. And it's now reached the top of the pole. It's already reached the top of the pole. <laughs> you yeah, have a look here. Yeah. It's growing another oh, offshoot. Yes. I try to air layer it because mm -hmm. I promised one of my friend to give it a free cutting. Oh, so yeah. Nice. And because of the hot uh, hot weather recently, the new leaf is, you see, what? it's gone. <laughs> Oh yeah. The new leaves are gone. Yeah, it's burned because it's too hot recently and I forgot to water them sometimes. A lot of jewels here. Yeah. yeah. Silver dragon I got from Ray Ray. Okay. And uh, this one Baginda. I got it from my free I got it free from my friends. Is Baginda uh, the dragon scale? Yeah, the dragon yeah. scale. And it's, you can it's see. also called Baginda. Yes, yes. I grow it from Horizon and you can see it's actually growing. There's a lot of roots oh. around here. And this is uh Punchak Borneosis. Alocasia Punchak Borneosis. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a Punchak Borneosis. And uh, Asnaniai. 
a lot of these came in the market lately. Yes, tissue, tissue culture. culture. Yes, yeah. tissue culture. Yes, okay. I, I got mine for about 50 ringgit. Yeah, same here. Okay. It, used to, uh, it's, it used to sell around like 300 ringgit. Exactly. When yes, when the product, yeah, when it, when it first came, eventually people got uh, excited about it and they start to mass cultivate. Yeah. And I bought it about 50 ringgit. Yeah. So yeah. For so the viewers here, 50 ringgit is maybe like 12 dollars. Yeah. So 12 dollars for this plant. You yeah. know, patience win. Exactly. I so waited about two years to get this, oh. and also for my dragon scale. Okay, I just wanna laugh at my well, not laugh. It's a really <laughs> word, but my friend in Australia, he uh -huh. paid 600, no, 800 Australian dollars. Oh really? For this really? So I was, wow. I was laughing at him. Yeah. Sorry, but I know in Australia it's very tough. To even in Taiwan, places. even in Taiwan. Taiwan? Yes, I have a few friends collect uh, allocation in Taiwan. The price is crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, what is this baby? Uh, it's uh, Alocasia sedenii. S-E-D-E-N-I-I. -I. Okay. I believe that's what it calls. <laughs> it's a cross between uh, Cupre and Longilongba. I don't know whether it's Longilongba cross Cupre or Cupre cross Longilongba. But I believe two of their parents is Cupre and Longilongba. You are missing the Meller. Which one? Alocasia Meller. Oh, it's over here yeah. and it takes time to grow. Yes. Here's the Meller. Oh, yes. Okay. And okay. yeah, there's one more Meller on the ground. On the ground? Yes, uh, because it's rotted. Yeah. I have one Instagram Meller grow up to my palm size, bigger than my palm. Wow. So, but eventually rotted. Okay. So what I did is, I put it on the ground. I just let it be, I let, I let the nature do the work, yeah. and it works for me. Okay, so it's better when you put it on the ground. Yes, of course, given that it's in a really good chunky mix. Now we're looking for that, I'll yep. take it now. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it looks happier. The yeah. Look at that. Wow. Okay, I see here the lime beetle. Yeah. It looks a little bit like golden dragon bat with Yes, with the speckles yeah, around. Speckles. That's what they call it, a lime fiddle. Yeah. You can see. And I see it loves to climb too. Yeah, it loves to climb a lot. And then we have... Oh! Oh my god! Mm, uh, this? Yeah. this is the Florida ghost. Oh, okay, this is Florida Yeah, this is Florida ghost. So it came out a bit of yellow and white, and then eventually it became green. So it, it's, it's, it's the ghost part is because when it just the came new, out, it's yes, white. Yes, it's white. Uh, but eventually it's green. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and this? This, this? is the big ears, philodendron big ears. Oh, okay. We call them 69686 six, six, philodendron. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. But I have another nickname for these, they call it big ears. So, what I try to do is I try to propagate them with air <laughs> layering. What is happening here? <laughs> because I, I cut once and I pass it to my friend. Okay. So it grows from another side, so yeah. I have to propagate again. Oh, wow, I have no this. more space. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With a little bit of imagination, you could think this is a job eye. Yeah, really. <laughs> a lot of them mistaken as a job eye. Yeah. Okay. And you have a look here. Right. Good. And oh, I love this. Can I come here and see this? Uh, yeah, the philodendron shawnoi. Yeah. From the side just now, I thought this is a bit eye because of the because of the ripple, works. the ribs. Okay, this is a little... Manana Kwaisen? It's really my, bushy, a lot of leaves. Yeah, because it used to grow under my friend's care. This is the leaf that he passed it to me. Uh -huh. So after, I think about six months of nurturing, it started to grow, you can see. So you're the plant nurturer. So I have to pass it back to him. So everyone... <laughs> so I promised to take it. I, 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 miss it. I promised to take care of the plant for him. So yeah. <laughs> it's the same owner from the uh, Anterium Black Dragon. I will start to charge, you know. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Wow, it looks a little bit like the Plamani eye. Yeah. With even more silvery patches. Yeah. But mommy has more uh, uh, lateral wings, so that you can see it has more wrinkling yeah. compared to Plamani. I never knew the mommy can have so much texture, actually. Yeah, mommy. Um, they used to call another form of this, they call silver cloud. Oh. With 
with the threats of uh, silver patches all around the foliage. Okay. And there's another form of mame without any uh, silver patches. They would just call it uh, mame. Sorry, then what do you call this? Patio. Wait, this patio is amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it has the like, same characteristic with Plamania too. Yeah. So you were saying there's a normal type of mame. Yes. Then how about this? What is this? It's actually a normal type of mame. This is a normal mame. Yes. I have no idea why it grows so much of silver patches after uh -huh. I cut them. You can see here. I cut here. I cut here. Uh -huh. So it generates like about one, two, three, four growth. Nice. So yeah. <laughs> You know, seeing your plants just reminds me of the plants I have killed. <laughs> I had mame and then they didn't make it. Yeah, I, I, I kill a lot of, too, uh, of plants too. I think that's how we learn. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we learn. Uh, oh my god, this is monstrous. <laughs> um, this is a McDowell? Yes, yes. Oh my god, I can't get over it. So here, can you stand next to it? Alright, sure. Yep. I have another mother plant. It's even bigger. So big? Okay, let's go see the mother plant. <laughs> Alright. There's so many. Yeah, there's oh a lot. If you, can, if you want to see the overall, you can okay, stand there. You'll see, this is the biggest one. This is crazy. This is the biggest one. Oh my god. I'm so huge. Oh. What's inside? It's still the same thing. What? Sunlight. Sunlight? Yes. Because when it's afternoon, it will hit uh, direct suns for a few hours. But the heliconia create a field of sunlight for them. So it's shaded. And sunlight is not too harsh on them. It's bright enough for them to grow. Okay, there's a lot of discussion about uh -huh. Pathazanum or... Well. Yep. How can you tell them apart? To be really honest, I don't think I'm capable to tell the difference. <laughs> but I believe mine is a McDova because of the inflorescence and the characteristic of colorism. You can see the stripes of this. Um, like it's dotted white. Is is the stripe white stripe here? Stripe. Yeah, stripes. Okay. And it has the pink wings uh, at the insertions patio. And when the new leaf is forming, it has a little bit of pink, pinkish at the back. You can see here, there's a little bit of pinkish at the back. Okay. And it, re it, it resembles the traits of uh, glorism. Okay. And the glorism is here. This is the mother plant glorism. Mm. And I cut it. Oh, you have a Thai constellation. Oh, yeah, that I actually, it's a gift from my friend. Wow. Maybe that's the advantage of taking plants from <laughs> plant people. <laughs> yeah, when it's a gift, they don't die. Uh, longi Longba. I have a lot of Longi Longba. Mm -hmm. This is one of the biggest one. Yeah. And there's one other one that's over there. And uh, this is a bunch of the Misolisiana that's doing well here. The green oh. velvet. Wow. Okay, a lot of the people mistaken it as Friedek. No, it's not. Friedek is the variegations of yes. Misolisiana. Oh. I have two of those too. It's difficult to grow. <laughs> To be really honest, this is this quite fuzzy. You find it difficult? Okay. Yeah, but after I change it to the better medium, the drainage one, it's doing fine. And this is the poly. Okay. Alokasha poly. Yes. Oh yeah, my neighbor gave me this Yeah, tree. it can grow really big. And this is Amazonica. It's over here. Oh, the smaller... No, it's bigger. It's supposed oh, to really? grow bigger. It rotted. This is Amazonica. You can see the shape of the foliage is longer. Oh. It's different. Okay. Amazonica, so it's like kind of zigzag on the yes. side. And it's longer. Longer. The patio actually will grow longer patio. Okay. The poly okay. will remain compact. It's shorter. The patio is shorter. Okay. And usually poly, the foliage will be a bit of a wee shape. And ah. yeah, you can see a bit of a wrinkling around the edges. I don't know if I can tell the difference. <laughs> I, I can't really tell the difference. Uh, most probably by uh, instinct. Another part is my friend. She asked me to put it here. <laughs> to help her to grow alocasia. So, yeah. so if you need your plants to be <laughs> taken care of, this guy <laughs> can do it. <laughs> so here will be another black velvet. Okay. The black velvet is happy here. Yeah. Well, this one is grow from bulbs. 
Oh. If you want to see her grandmother, it's over there. Wow. <laughs> this is the mother. Oh wait, they have a cooper. Oh sorry, this is a grandson. Yeah, Cooper is there. Cooper, all of them is inside there. Oh hello, Cooper. So cute. Uh reversa? Yep. A location reversa. There are also tissue cultured ones in the market. Do you yes, know if yes. yours is tissue culture? Here. Yes. Oh maybe we compare them side by yep. side. Because I have friends who are wondering what's the difference. Yeah, you can have a look. And I got this, I think, really long time ago from a nursery. So this is the real deal. Yep, the allocation uh, reverse. Tissue culture. Yeah. Okay, so people now you know what the difference looks like. It feels to me like this is a difficult allocation. Yeah, it's really difficult. Yeah. It's a lithophytic allocation. It prefers. Uh, it grows on the limestone, the crack of the limestone. In the nature, oh, so you put a lot of chunky pumice. Yeah, pumice. You can see the roots here. You can see, and of course, I add a, a lot more dolomites and Epsom salt for uh, a little fire tick allocation to help increase its intake of yep. calcium. Yes, yes, especially oh. jewel allocation. They like that. They like, they like that. Okay, this is good to know. This is green, another form of reverse. Yep, okay. Yeah, it's not as spectacular as yeah, with the prominent uh, posterior lobes. Usually, you can see this one has the pelted foliage and just a little bit lobes here. Okay. Mm. Okay, that's the lobe, and then this. And is this one has the posterior lobes. You can see a deep mm -hmm. lobes here, but this is green in color. Okay. It's a green reversa, and they really prefer to be in chunky mix. Humans, wow. volcanic rocks and stuff. Yeah. Oh wait, Dubia! Oh, it's doing so well. And it's climbing up. How, how long have you had this? Uh, a year. Okay, it's very sad. I've got mine, but I didn't let it you, climb properly. I just use a tape. A tape? Yeah, to tape it. <laughs> oh. So afterward, they will just do their own thing. Ah, oh, nice. And I cut once, trying to propagate. Yeah. <laughs> it's not successful. <laughs> so I gave up. I would just let them, let them grow themselves. Yeah, you've got quite a lot of room to go. It's gonna hit, it's gonna hit the rooftop already, so I have no idea where, how, how, long, how long it takes. Okay, I'll let you have my tree. You can let it climb on my tree. <laughs> I will, if you want to. You can write my tree. Oh my god, a big terrifolium. Big terrifolium, yes. yeah. And look at the Berries. Yeah, you can see the berries here. There's another berries here. Oh, you're gonna be a rich guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your retirement fund. Okay, wait, I'll get it. There's a lot of berries here. Wow. It's incredible. It's so beautiful. Yeah. They are they are right for plucking. Yeah. If you want to, you can take a few. <laughs> and try yeah. I have a bitter, I have two, but they are nowhere near as large. <laughs> what kind of fruit do you use on them? No, I don't, I don't, I don't really fertilize them. What I did is I just put a bag of osmocot inside and I water them almost every day. Every day. And the only medium in this part is cocoa husk. Uh, what? Cocoa husk. And is that a lot of roots I see? Yes, that's roots. You can see the roots everywhere. Oh my god. Wait. Do you want a chair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Because in, in natural habitats, they wanted something to clinch on it. So that's how the arrow root goes. Thank you so much, Lauren, for this lovely tour. And I've also learned so much from you. And the poem. Yes. Here you go. Ah! It's a philodendron lupinum. I get a tour and a little plant. I hope I can root it well and then let it climb out a tree yes, eventually. You can too. I can see so much potential in your garden. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much once again. Very inspirational Thank you. and really amazing to find out the leaves can grow so big. I will show my plant these pictures so that you know they will be more ambitious. <laughs> okay everyone, thank you very much for watching to the end. And if you like this, please remember to subscribe. And see you in my next episode. Bye-bye.